So thank you all for being here again today. If you're here today, it means that yesterday was okay. Today what we do is going to be different from what we did yesterday. Every one of us is a manager because we manage our own life. Life is not something that is happening to us. Life is something that we are doing. So we are creating our own lives and we manage our life in order to achieve a goal. So my many years of study and experience managing, organizing, being a leader, I concentrated here. Now, one datum uh, from Hubbard, he says, it's very difficult to define life, but he gives a formula for living. And he says, living, having and following a basic goal. So we have a goal, and the goal is my goal. You cannot give another person a goal. So when mama tells her boy, be an engineer, not a ballet dancer, it doesn't work. A goal is something that a person chooses or adopts for himself. So a person finds his goal. So yesterday we were talking about the individual, spirit, mind, body, uh, aware mind, reactive mind, and how we handle the reactive mind to raise the ability of the individual. Today we're going to talk about groups, or we can call it organization, sometimes we say org, which is short for organization, group, team, uh, because none survive alone. Everything we do, we do with other people. Everything we have, we receive from other people. I mean, I have this glass. Now, if you think how many people worked to create this glass. Now, glass, I think, comes from sand. The sand, to arrive here in my hand as a glass, went through the hands of hundreds of people. We only survive when we make something for other people. So if you look at the first page of your manual for today, we are all of us creating a product. And a product is something that you can give to another person. And then it's called valuable final product. And it's exchange. It's something that you give to another person. If it's not something that another person wants, it has no value as a product. Because when you give somebody a product, they give you exchange. Okay, so a product can be physical like a glass or a telephone. And most of the products we make today are information, product, knowledge. Like what I'm doing now is giving you knowledge, which is a product. Now, in order to make the product whole, and in order to have the product in exchange with other people and to make a large amount of product, we need organization. So what is an organization? How does it work? What are the key principles of making the organization work and succeed? This is what I cover here and we will talk a little bit here now. Now, a very famous example of no organization but genius, great talent, is Vincent van Gogh. He painted more than a thousand paintings. Do you know how many paintings he sold for money? One painting. Because he had no organization, nobody working for him, no agent. He was all by himself. He was supported by his brother Theo, who lived in Paris. And he gave Theo a lot of his paintings because he had no room for the painting. He lived in a little room, in a little hotel. He had no place for the painting. So he sent the paintings to Theo in Paris and Theo gave him a little bit of money. He died a young man at the age of 37. A few months after he died, his younger brother Theo, at the age of 32 maybe, also died. Theo had a wife and she only, when her husband Theo died, all she had 
was a few hundred pictures by her brother-in-law, Vincent. That's all she had. And she was a very good marketing person. She was a very bright, energetic lady. People were telling her, ha, ah, Vincent van Gogh, nothing. These paintings, useless, worthless. And she said, no, this is great art. She traveled all over Europe. She took a ship to New York. And she went to galleries, to museum, to wealthy people. And she sold the paintings by Van Gogh already for thousands of dollars. So when she died around 1920, she was a wealthy lady. And Vincent Van Gogh was a big name. Okay, so we learned from this that alone, you can do nothing. In a group, working with people, you can create a big effect. All right, so we need an organization and we need to work with the team. Now, the individual has three parts. Spirit, mind, body. Okay, and you will be surprised, but an organization has three parts. The organization has a spirit, the organization has a mind, and the organization has a body. Now, what is the spirit of the organization? We call it the goal maker. Every organization, no matter how big, began with one individual. And the one individual has an idea. We call it also vision, or goal, or purpose. This one individual has the idea of creating something. And if he has an idea for a product that has value for other people, that other people will want from him and will be willing to exchange with him, he starts doing these things, like you're doing something, you're making something, but you're working alone, but you're doing your own marketing, people order from you. Okay, so you're not like Vincent, not making swords, putting in the cellar, keeping it, you're getting it out there. Okay, good, good. But if you have more demand, more people wanting more swords, you can take somebody to help you, somebody to do accounting for you, somebody to be, to be on the phone for you, somebody to take orders. So you start creating a little organization. You and somebody else. You and a helper. So we start creating a team. And a definition of a team is a group of individuals and they have a common goal. And they have communication lines. Like right now we here, we're a team or an organization. We're all sitting in the same space. Uh, we have the goal for a few hours to listen to Danny and to learn something. And uh, we are talking to each other. But if we look at people on the street walking around, obviously they're not a team because they're going in different directions and they're not talking to each other. So we have the guy who starts the organization with an idea. He's the goal maker. Now, even a tiny organization must have information, product design, product engineering, uh, customer base, contact lists of people, and of course accounting, finance. Even in a one-man operation, we have a lot of information. So just like we spoke about the individual mind, the group mind is storing data and making decisions. When we talk management, organization, administration, really we are talking data processing. Sometimes in one of my businesses, somebody comes to me and says, Danny, uh, we have a problem. Tell us what to do, this or this. So what do I say? Give me information. <laughs> the biggest mistake you can make, of course, is trying to make a decision without all the information. So smart management is just being able to collect data and to see what is relevant, what is not relevant. Okay, so you sort out the data you know what to do, then who's going to do it? Actually doing the work, we call it body. The body is physically doing the work. So I'm now standing here talking, this is body. This is actually doing the work. But uh, two months ago when I said to Ivana, maybe I come to Praha, maybe we do a seminar, that was goal making. It was the idea. Then. For two months, I talked to Ivana, and Ivana talks to Veronica, who talks to Tamara, and we plan, and we analyze, and we see how to do this, and we put something on Facebook, and we take some money from people, and we, make, and we prepare everything, and this, all this preparation and thinking what to do is the mind. 
the analyzing the planning. Okay, somebody made for us sandwiches and somebody is now standing and talking. This is body work. Okay, so managing is being able to go up and down, setting a goal, analyzing data, and doing the work. Now, when we work, we want to see how we are doing because in our activity, we can be very successful or in our activity, we can be a total failure. Who has a business here? You have a business? What is your business? Dressmaker. Dressmaker, good. Uh, how do you measure your business? In money or how do you measure the business? In money. Money. And satisfaction of uh, clients. Good, satisfaction of clients, money. There won't be a good quarter in numbers of clients or number of money. She has three clients. Okay, so you have three clients and this is okay for you. Okay, so we have quarterly and in a quarter you say three is okay. If you have a quarter with zero, that's not good. And if you have next quarter, say we go up to eight clients, that would be too much. But if you have people helping you, you have a little organization and you make more money. So for any activity, we have some way of measuring on paper or by intuitively, by we sense it, we know what it is. Our failure is zero and success is a certain level, but we have the idea, hey, if I can make even bigger, then wow, I can expand, I can be even more successful.